travel is so common these days, sometimes we forget that it hasn't been very long that airplanes have been flying in the sky. How common is it for us to order something on Amazon or ship something via FedEx or UPS and we put no thought into it being delivered through airplanes. It's flown and we forget that it's been only a hundred years since the air mail system started in 1918. And um, we also, it's, it's all too easy to forget how technology has changed and how these jumbo jets of these days um, they're so efficient and uh, GPS and navigation but what about in 1918 when that started and what were those aviators facing well today we're gonna take a journey back in time and see how they navigated and some of the difficulties that they might have been facing as they started to deliver the mail and um, really be pioneers of the sky Hopefully uh, you guys have been able to get out and enjoy the land of the free a little bit. We're out today. Apologize for the wind. You can see behind me a big giant arrow on the ground. What the heck is that? That arrow is the airmail route. It's a guide for back in the 1920s. The aircraft would use these arrows to navigate as they delivered the mail and we'll talk a lot about uh, the history of that and what that means as we show some of the some of our drone shots up around here but it's pretty neat these old airmail route arrows on september 23rd 1911 earl ovington became the first pilot to deliver airmail in the united states Beginning in 1912, postal officials urged Congress to appropriate money to launch airmail service. Working at the speed of government, this was not accomplished until Congress finally authorized the use of $50,000 for airmail experiments. Finally, the post office began scheduled airmail service between New York and Washington, D.C. on May 15, 1918. The airmail routes were expanded, and the transcontinental route was not completed until late in the year 1920. That is where we find ourselves today, is on the last leg of the transcontinental airmail route. It was completed and opened on September 8, 1920. Regular night flights began in 1924. They believed that airmail was not sustainable unless it was completed during the day and during the night. Now, a couple things came up first. Um, this big square, somebody already even asked me, why is there a big square in the middle of the arrow? And that was for a tower. So you'd build a tower. Um, in fact, you can see right down here on the corners, you can see the remnants of uh, where that tower would have been with a beacon or a light on top. And that was the next question is, how do you navigate if it's covered in snow? And that would be with these lights and beacons. Um, and these pilots would have been flying in visual flight conditions or uh, basically not covered in weather and snowing and uh, cloud cover. But um, you could still have snow obscuring the arrows and so these beacons would have been built on top of towers to help.
made our way to our second arrow along our little journey today and I didn't mention it the other one but both of these arrows are along the San Francisco to Salt Lake route which is a small segment of a larger San Francisco to Chicago route um, once again on these arrows you can see the, where they would come in to uh, the angle and a slight turn as it guides them through um, the mountain passes and uh, where they can stay at the lowest altitude um, and clear of uh, clouds covering the mountains. One more thing I wanted to mention was um, in our previous video we went to Stansbury Island and that's the island just across the way here. Uh, we've also got um, just behind us another salt factory that we talked about in our last video and you can see just how tall those piles of salt are that's pretty amazing um, so if you haven't seen that video make sure to check that out and um, talk about getting off the beaten path a little bit uh, one more thing is that all of these you can find any of these little arrows on a website for any given state and um, that website is called arrows across america so go ahead and check that out find the arrows in your state go and see them uh, so far now the first one you saw took a, a little bit of uh, probably some four-wheel driving any suv or truck could make it but it wasn't so far off the road that you would need, um, you couldn't hike to it. This one here is easy, it's straight off the freeway, and uh, so any any car could get there. Uh, you find that quite often these um, aircraft would have flown the same, similar routes as modern day freeways do, and so they should be mostly accessible uh, regardless of where uh, you are, uh, what state you're in. Also, um, and remember this is these air mail routes were flown in the 1920s and that's the, in the, the golden age of flight so roughly 1919 through 1936 um, when all sorts of different advances were taking place. Charles Lindbergh who started his career as a uh, air mail uh, pilot and you know in the era of Amelia Earhart um, those famous aviators that we've heard so much about uh, that's the time of um, or the era where these arrows would have been used and the mail would have been delivered once again we've made it uh, to another concrete arrow this one is in Stockton, Utah, and it is part of the airmail route between Los Angeles and Salt Lake City. It's a little bit hard to find, a little hard to get to. Um, the website th where we've found the location and details of each of these uh, arrows says that it's uh, fairly easy to get to, but it's since been marked no trespassing in a lot of places and uh, we had to find a roundabout way to get up here but uh, once again pretty neat place and um, you know we uh, we talked a little bit about how easy it would be to navigate using these arrows and my oldest son says well well geez they're they're not very big it sure would be easier if they were a lot bigger um, which got us thinking about in the 1920s what it must have taken out here in the middle of nowhere very arid and dry climate to make a concrete arrow so um, between automobiles and moving the concrete and moving water to mix it with um, primitive roads at the time I would imagine it sure would be a feat and that's that's one of the reasons that I really like to get out here and and see these things is it gets me thinking and contemplating how difficult life must have been um, and you know and I th think about the struggles in my own life and and how small they are compared to um, what people m must have gone through back in the day uh, it really puts things into perspective
made our way to a uh, the third arrow along the San Francisco to Salt Lake route and the second arrow along the LA to Salt Lake route. I got a helicopter flying overhead, sorry about the noise. Unfortunately I've come to learn that this arrow, which is really neat because it's where the two routes meet up, so the, the arrow looks a little different than the others, um, but it's on private property and I was told I couldn't even, um, obviously we can't get to it and we can't even fly the drone directly over it so we're going to do our best it's probably going to be a long from a long ways away but we're going to do the best to fly the drone directly up where we're still on uh, state property and um, see if we can't see this arrow from a long ways off This is looking south towards Stockton along the Los Angeles to Salt Lake City route and we pan to the north to show you where the route joins the San Francisco to Salt Lake route. And now we are looking west towards San Francisco and the route of the first two arrows that we visited and now we pan east to see where this San Francisco to Salt Lake route joins the Los Angeles to Salt Lake route. As we bring today's journey to a close, we stumbled across this uh, Veterans Memorial. Uh, we like to say to, to get out and enjoy the land of the free. And of course, we have that ability because of the great veterans that have served our country. And uh, so we'd like to, to thank all of those that have served and those that continue to serve, the brave men and women who have fought and died for our freedoms. My children also, they wanted me to give a shout out to their YouTube channels. So if you get a moment, if you're a golfer, if you like golf, check out Grizz Golf. You got my youngest son that uh, does some golfing instruction. And if you like disc golf, you can check out Laster Day. My oldest son does a, uh, a YouTube channel with um, some disc golf instruction and overviews, course overviews. So be sure to check those out, Grizz Golf and Laster Day. As always, get out and enjoy the land of the free. We've made our way to the second arrow along our route of, our, uh, not our route of flight. Uh, 